Hello and welcome back to the Littlest Petcast. I'm your host, James, and today we are going over the episode Lights, Camera, Mongoose. So, it opens in India, in a marketplace. People are going about their business when suddenly a white tiger jumps out. Everyone acts scared, even though this tiger is, like, smaller than a child. But, like, not by much, like, it's like, it's up to their chin, which, I mean, I guess is kind of frightening. But it's not the size of a regular tiger. It's the size of a little tiger. So, I guess everything is little in this universe? I don't know. So, whatever. Anyway, people faint at the sight of this tiger. And then one person fainting reveals three tiger cubs in a cage. So there are tigers smaller than this tiger, which was already pretty small to begin with. So the mama tiger approaches, but then a poacher comes out and says that mommy makes four. He begins to use his blow dart gun when he sees a silhouette of a mongoose. The mongoose does some tricks and then Kamen Rider kicks the poacher to the ground. The dart flies up in the air and the mongoose is revealed to look a little different from Sunil, but it still looks like a mongoose. You know? We'll, we'll get into that later. Oh goodness. Anyway, he grabs the keys from the poacher and unlocks the cage, freeing the tiger cubs and they return to their mom and their mom starts taking care of them. Then the dart starts falling down and it looks like it's going to hit our mama tiger. But the mongoose catches it and then the poacher gets up and uses his darts again. But the mongoose catches the second dart and throws both of them back into the blow dart gun and into the poacher's mouth. Miraculously, the poacher does not choke. But the two darts do hit his tongue and he passes out. After celebrating his own victory for a bit, the Mama Tiger picks up the Mongoose and they walk off together. Then it is revealed that this is a movie that most of the pets are watching. And fun fact about this, there's like a little bit of like a film effect on it. So like if you knew that, you could probably see it a bit. Although it is very subtle, and honestly, I think I might have just been seeing things. But I could have sworn it was there. Most of the pets seem to be enjoying this movie, but Vinny is not. So then Pepper says, don't be a hater, and tells him that this is the latest romance comedy action adventure musical movie starring famous mongoose actor, Sharuk. While she's explaining that, she holds up a DVD case of either an entirely different movie or a bad cover for this movie because it's him with a female mongoose and they're both dressed in extravagant get dress wear. And uh, that's not what we've seen of this movie so far, anyway. Also, like this female mongoose has like long human-like hair i don't why this is just weird she doesn't need it to distinguish herself from males of her species i don't think like many of the other female pets don't have that distinguishing feature i mean like, you could make an argument for Minka, but I guess that's more of a stylistic choice than it is, uh, you know, just giving her tertiary sexual characteristics. This is just weird, but <clears throat> we're not done being weird just yet. The others are excited about this Sharuk movie, but Vinny's still kind of eh. And then Minka just uh, puts the popcorn ball upside down on his head. 
and um yeah that's that's where we get the opening i don't know i couldn't free flow into the next scene so later we see the movie the Shur- that Sharuk and that female mongoose that i just talked about are kissing when sunil turns off the tv which means the movie is still playing by the way he just turned off the tv not the dvd and everyone complains even Vinny, who seems to have gotten into it even though he said he wasn't into it earlier so sunil wants to show everyone his newest magic trick and he just interrupted everyone's movie time to do that come on sunil you couldn't wait it looked like it was almost over i think i don't know so uh yeah anyway he sets up his new trick by reminding everyone of his disappearing trick And then Pepper responds with, yeah, and my eyebrows just grew back in. And then he describes his trick as kind of like that, but with people and they're just switching places. And he calls it the old switcheroo. And he just describes it as like him and another person going through space and switching places. He makes this like grandiose gesture about all of this and everyone is unimpressed by this so far. So uh, he goes to pick a member of the audience and everyone is seemingly reluctant to do it. And then he picks Penny Ling, but she rejects him at first, but then gives in later, which not, not the best example to give, just saying. But I mean... It's not it's not anything weird or dirty. Whatever. You know what I mean. I'm 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 making a bigger deal out of this than it should be. Anyway. He asks if they've ever met and Penny says yes, but then Sunil asks again and then she goes with no. But like the thing is he doesn't need to ask this in the first place. Cause like this is just a magic show for his friends. It's not like he's doing this for money or for like an audience that like is in the hundreds and won't doubt his magic. I mean, not not in the same way that they doubt his magic, but Anyway, so he begins the trick and runs around wildly while screaming and then trips once but then keeps going. He then gets into position and then does the trick. He throws a smoke bomb down and a cloud appears over him and then a cloud appears over Penny Ling as he takes Penny's place. And everyone is impressed at first, even Sunil, but then Penny Ling doesn't show up where Sunil was which uh confuses everyone Vinny says you only did a half the trick david copper fail where's penny ling <laughs> which <laughs> i i love a good pun <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness anyway um they're all a little spooked about Penny Ling's mysterious disappearance, but Penny Ling comes rushing through the front door, past Mrs. Twombly, through the pet door, and says that she saw that they were filming a Sharuk movie down the street. What are the odds? Everyone else is excited for this, except for Vinny, who... Like, it's just like, eh, I don't care. But he was earlier. So, what gives? So, anyway. Sunil thinks his magic is better than he thought if he teleported Penny Ling down the street. But Zoe hushes him and then plans how to get to Shrook. 
they talk amongst themselves about all sorts of different ways. And then Sunil offers to do the trick again and bend the fabric of reality to get them there, but they reject him and then just go to ask Blythe. I mean, he can bend reality. He's like, okay, maybe he's not the best at it, but he would be if there was Professor X here. I mean, come on, how many feats is this now that Sunil has? He can hypnotize people. He can, like, like infer where people are. And he can bend the fabric of reality to teleport people. How is how is no one like freaking out about this? I mean, then again, Russell and Vinny have super strength and Pepper has the ability to have dangerous things avoid her when they uh, are putting her in danger of her life. So maybe they're just like, eh, whatever. So then uh, Blythe takes them to where they're shooting the Sharuk movie. And uh, Blythe asks how Penny Ling found out about this. But then Sunil says that uh, he magicked her there. And Blythe is just confused. Sunil says he can't reveal how he did it. But Pepper says it's because he doesn't know how. But Sunil refutes that. They go up to the set only to be blocked by a security guard. And the security guard forces them out. The pets try to do like the puppy dog eyes, but he isn't having any of that. He says, take your critters and their fleas and get out. To which Vinny responds, geckos can't get fleas. And people say, I'm dumb. Which... I knew he was a gecko last episode. Why did they keep saying he was a lizard last episode? I mean, they're both reptiles that kind of look similar, but... Lizards and geckos are two different species of animals. Like, come on. Ah. Like, I mean... I guess considering with what's about to come up, that's not entirely surprising from uh, the writers, but they should know better than that at least. So the pets ask what to do, and then Blythe says it's going to be hard to get past Tiny over there, to which Vinny responds, ha, he's anything but Tiny. Honestly, I feel like Albert Einstein over here. That wasn't a misread. He said Einstein. And, (laughs) like, these jokes are a little funnier to me. Because I just read the, like, Sean Baby article about the five types of stupid people. And, like, this is, like, number four. Which... Which comes after number bots. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, Sunil offers to bend reality again to get them closer, but the pets won't let him. Which, I mean, he's offering to bend reality to get like the security guard out of their way. I mean, you won't even let him do that. Come on. So, in Sharuk's trailer, his agent is on the phone saying that Sharuk is busy all day and that, like, at one point he's so busy that they need to invent a new word to describe how busy he is. And Sharuk laments that he has no me time. So he then walks out, and then Vinny gets so excited that he faints. And Russell calls him out on that, saying, I thought you weren't a fan, Vinny. What gives? Which, like... I don't even know why Vinny lied about this at all. 
Like, it's it's not even like, oh, it's just a chick flick. I'm a big tough guy. I shouldn't like chick flicks. This is like a Bollywood movie that is acclaimed by many people. Is just not like say he does he just say he doesn't like it because he doesn't want to be like in the popular crowd but then he can't handle himself is is Vinny like attempting to be hipster in all of this but then fails dramatically when he sees world famous superstar Shah Rukh uh I don't I don't get why he had to lie on this. This is just like you can like it or you don't have to like it, but I don't know why like you'd have to lie. There's not even like a dumb reason he had to lie. So, um anyway, uh Shuruk then goes and meets with everyone and Pepper says he's seen all of his movies, including Planet of the Mongoose, which if it's a Planet of the Apes ripoff, like, shouldn't he be the bad guy in that? Maybe he is the bad guy, and he likes, and, uh, Pepper likes, uh, Sharuk's bad guy work. Uh, the fantastic Mr. Mongoose. And Pardon My Mongoose in 3D. Which, okay, now that I'm thinking about this, maybe if, like, animal superstars are as prevalent enough that like Sharuk is basically Robert Downey Jr. or something then maybe all of those judges from the last episode thinking that Vinny dancing and being a dance instructor's blase makes a little more sense but like again that that would be like a much more interesting world if that was more clearly defined. I wouldn't have to be on this rant if that was more clearly defined. You know? Like, if it was like something where the animals and people are more integrated, that would be interesting and fun. And, you know, it'd be even more interesting and fun if they couldn't talk to each other and Blythe was, like, the only one, you know? But, like, they don't establish that. And and then it just gets confusing why, like, this guy can be, like, an an amazing world-renowned actor with fans, human and animal alike... And nothing seems suspicious about it, but here it's just weird. It's just weird, you know? Also, like, if, like, Shuruk is, like, so busy that, like, you have to invent a new word for busy, like, I think maybe you should tone down that animal acting thing. Because, like, if he's that busy, like, He's a mongoose. He's not, like, a human actor. Humans are, like, adaptable. Mongoose, I don't think, are as adaptable as humans. They have, like, strict schedules. Uh, Maybe. I don't know. I don't know how to raise a mongoose, but apparently neither do they. I am going on a rant right now. And it is, like, four in the morning when I'm recording this. But I haven't put one out in over a week so whatever we're just gonna push on through this so oh god where was I on this so Sharuk thanks her for uh, seeing his movies and then turns to Sunil and inquires if they've met Blythe says that they look alike, which, come on, Blythe, come on, you should know better than this, they don't see it, like, just because they're both mongoose doesn't mean they look exactly alike, 
you can tell they have like a different skin pattern and Sharuk has lighter fur and honestly come on like you should why why is Blythe being such a speciesist Although, I don't know, maybe maybe that's not just a Blythe thing. Maybe it's a systemic thing. And Blythe is just, like, part of this systemic problem with speciesism. But she's aiming to fix it. Because she can talk with them and get some diplomacy going. I am seriously not ready to be awake, but... Here I am. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, let's 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 keep this going. <laughs> anyway. Uh Shrook uh has a bunch of fans that are excited over him and flocking towards him as he runs off. And they go past the border that Blythe was not allowed to go past. But Blythe does not wonder how they can go past that border, but they can't, and instead is worried that she'll be late for an ice sculpting class, which, like, the pets are like, what? But then Blythe says that it was Jasper's idea, and she's going along. After all, uh, ice doesn't wait for you, as Jasper says, which is true, Blythe points out, because it would just melt into water otherwise. So, she drops off everyone outside of the pet shop, confident that they can just get in, which I think they can. There's a pet door there. I think. I'm pretty sure there's a pet door there. So, anyway. Uh, she then hears a car honking and informs the pest that that's a ride and that she's off. So then Shrook pops out of Blythe's scooter and Vinny freaks out again and they wonder what, what he's doing there. Shrook said he needed to get away for a while but then Sunil interjects with a rant about how people at least appreciate him for what he does and his mega superstardom. But then Shrook tells him at what cost. You couldn't handle it but... You want to try it? Go ahead. And then Pepper and the others take him in, and Sunil storms off. Sunil is pouting around town when he sees uh, one, Shrook's agent and then takes advantage of the human speciesism epidemic that is going around to take his place while she is none the wiser. Now, okay, Blythe, it's bad enough that she confused the two. But this is his agent. She's with him for most of the day, any given day of the week. She should know how to identify animals and compare them between the one she takes care of most of the time and one that isn't that animal. And even if this is just like... Oh, like, just a temp agent that's, like, there, or, like, an agent that's, like, there for America, because, like, Sharuk is based in India, but his Indian agent couldn't make it. Like, she still should know the difference, because, like, like, later in the episode, the security guard says that, like... A lot of people own this mongoose, and like a bunch of companies, which feels weird to say because, like, like owning a star is wrong, as I learned about in the most recent episode of History Honeys about the. Hollywood machine from the golden era of Hollywood. <laughs> but, like, it is an animal, and people own animals. That's not... That's not 
weird, but it's just the whole actor thing. So, right, she also says that Sharuk needs to stop having two-hour lunch breaks, which, uh, if he was so busy that you needed to invent a word for how busy he was, why does he have, like, a two-hour lunch break, which is healthy, I think, at least for humans, but I don't know about mongoose. But then why does she also feel the need to cut down on that? Uh, I am really ranty this episode. So, um, back at the pet shop. Oh boy, here we go. Penny Ling uh, asks what it's like to be a superstar. And then Shrook claps. And then a Bollywood song just happens about his life which is extravagant and exaggerated about what his life actually is like he says he has like so many riches he's covered in jewels he has like diplomas from everywhere he says he like pays people to do stuff for him like chew or laugh which is normal but then he also says that his Swiss bank account is in Germany, which unless it's in the Swiss embassy, no, just no. I know this is a little detail, but that's not why you don't have a Swiss bank account just to have a Swiss bank account. You have a Swiss bank account so that the money in the Swiss bank account applies to Swiss laws and not the laws of the respective country. This is like why people have Swiss bank accounts. Uh, and like I'd, I'd imagine like Germans financial laws are kind of strict because like especially like the German uh, representative in the EU was like chastising like the Greek minister of the EU about like how like the whole Greek financial thing uh, I am really ranty this episode and I'm just gonna run with it <laughs> so and then he also makes uh, Russell and Vinny dance for him and because, like, before that, it was just Sharuk dancing with the four girls. Which is weird, but, I mean, it's like the style of Bollywood is, I think. I don't know, I haven't seen too many Bollywood movies. In fact, I think the only one I've seen is, like, Slumdog Millionaire. And even then, I'm not sure if that was a Bollywood movie exactly. Or at least what you would think of when you hear Bollywood. Th this takes the more traditional Bollywood approach <laughs> that you see parodies of and stuff. And throughout the song, and just after it, the rest of the pets kind of learn that uh, Shrook seems to be demanding about what he wants and stuff. So, they're a little confused on that, but they'll kind of go with it. Anyway, um, at Sharuk's trailer, Sunil is in makeup, and he's enjoying it and giggling at every little piece of makeup he gets put on. And then, as a thank you, he pulls out some flowers for the makeup crew, which they find really sweet, which... I also find really sweet, to be perfectly honest. I mean, I guess it would get tiring if you, like, do it all the time, but, you know, every once in a while, treat your makeup people. They're there doing the hard work, like, stuff that I certainly couldn't do. I don't, I don't even know the first thing about makeup. So, like, just, just every once in a while, treat your makeup people to something nice. 
So anyway, Sunil is then dragged out to set, and then they begin filming, but Sunil doesn't know what to do because he just got there and he didn't look over the script. And the director yells at him for that, and then he starts getting a little scared. So then uh, at the pet shop, uh, the pets are pampering Shrook some more, and they seem really annoyed especially Vinny, because he's just asked to turn on the TV when the remote is less than two inches away from him. He turns it on, and the movie from before comes on, and it continues from a little later than it was, which is, like, really confusing. If if they do have, like, turning off the TV stops the DVD player technology... Why is it like a few seconds after it happened, not like immediately when Sunil turned off the TV? Or has it, the movie just been on a loop and they just got to that point since Sunil turned off the TV? Why would a movie play on loop on a DVD? Unless like the remote just keeps accidentally getting pressed or something. I mean, I don't know, they did, like, some Bollywood dancing. Maybe one of them hit, like, the remote in the fantasy. Like, I mean, we don't see it, but, like, fantasy them, like, just, like, hit it unknowingly and it just played again. I am looking way too deep into this. So then... Uh, Blythe comes in with an ice sculpture of Mrs. Twombly and sees what's going on and remarks that this is Sunil's best trick yet and wonders to the pets how uh, Sunil got them to do this, which, come on, Blythe! Like, once, once is like, like, you could, like, walk that back just a little bit, but twice... Twice, it shows that you're part of a bigger systemic problem. (laughs) And you really, really need to work on your diplomacy skills between human and animal communities. I'm really going on about this, but it's just confusing. Come on, like, you can clearly see that Shrook. His fur is lighter and he has white markings on him. So the pets uh, tell her that this is Shrook, and she freaks out about this whole situation. But Shrook is just whatever and just asks someone to blink his eyes for him. But then he does it himself when no one does it. And then she, and then Blythe realizes that Sunil is probably at the set if uh, Shrook is here. And then Russell says. When you say it that way, it sounds bad. And then she rushes off. Meanwhile, Sharuk asks for a foot massage, and his feet are nasty. Like, really nasty. So then, uh, at the trailer, Shrik, uh, Sunil is getting a foot massage, and the makeup person says, Oh, you should be all ready for the next scene. And then the agent says, Shrook is ready for the walking across hot cold scene. <laughs> Which, that's good writing. <laughs> I, that's like, I don't care. That's some good writing. It's like, <laughs> it's it's simple for sure, but it's it's effective. <laughs> I love it. So then, uh... Blythe rushes down on her scooter, and then uh, Penny Ling pops out of the scooter uh, um, sidecar and joining her. And then uh, she says that uh, she wanted to get out of rubbing Sharuk's feet. And uh, they arrive at the set, wondering how to find Sunil. But then they hear that the mongoose is ready, and they approach Tiny from before to tell him that they have the wrong mongoose. And then, uh, Blythe, yeah, Blythe thinks that this will work, even though she didn't notice the differences between Sunil and Sharuk twice until someone told her. 
So someone who isn't actively looking and can not talk to animals, I don't think we get the difference here. Even though they should. This is exactly why you would have a security guard to make sure an imposter like Sunil does not get in. But whatever. Like, the, sec the security guard isn't having any of it, and this is where the security guard explains that, uh, like, the mongoose is owned by this company, which is owned by this company, which is a parent company of this company, and it's just whatever. And so, uh, after that, uh, they hear Sunil freaking out on the walkie-talkie, and Blythe says that that's her mongoose, and that uh, he's saying that he doesn't want to be there. But the guard says he heard, <laughs> which means to the guard to get lost, you little girl. Which, I don't, I don't even know why Blythe thought that that would be effective. So, um, they walk off a few feet. And Blythe tells Penny Ling that they need to get the walkie-talkie. And Penny Ling is on it. She jumps on the guard's head. And then uh, the guard drops the walkie-talkie. And then runs off. And the guard chases uh, her. While Blythe grabs the dropped walkie-talkie. And sneaks off. And also the guy was just ordering pizza with it as well. Even though he should have a cell phone. Or maybe he was just telling someone else. Whatever. So uh, at the pet shop, Russell gathers everyone uh, to come up with a plan to get rid of Sharuk. Uh, so uh, they gather around and they just come up with things and they put it in motion. So when Sharuk asks for a refill on his tea... So he gets up in his face and aggressively sings at him about how they're friends and they hang out in the pet shop. Anyway, he then bumps into Pepper, who sprays them with the water flower thing. Which, I mean, she's not even wearing it. It's not concealed at all. He, like, should have seen that coming. But then uh, Vinny asks for some dance tips, and then absorbs Sharuk in like a mini dance tornado and then Minky gets paint on him and then continues to paint him more to like bug Sharuk to just get him to want to leave the pet shop and Sharuk then escapes the play area and says he has to get out of there because like he just wanted to relax and have other people wait on him instead of like you know walking across hot coal and going on to a bungee scene, which is where we join Sunil and Blythe and Pep and Penny Ling. So the guard is looking for them and uh but there's some behind some trash cans sneaking around. So uh the coordinators are talking over the walkie talkie saying that Sunil is ready for the bungee jump scene and uh, Sunil tries to run off because it's a bungee jump scene and Sunil is scared of a lot of things but is just bungeed back. Sunil is hesitant to jump and then the assistant goes to check on the cord to make sure it works which leaves Sunil alone with the walkie talkie. Blythe and Penny say that he should use his magic to get out because they can't get up there because the security guard's there. But Sunil says that he feels like a hack because no one appreciates him. Then Penny Ling comes through for him and say that, like, you actually bent reality to get me down here. That's not something a hack could do. And then Sunil, like, says yeah that's right i'm not a hack i'm good at this so then um he's still a little nervous about jumping off but then sunil just gets yelled off the building 
and then performs the trick, and then Shrook is in the bungee cord celebrating the fact that he's in a bungee cord instead of facing, singing, squirting, dancing, painting pets that drive him crazy. And uh, with that, uh, Blythe and Penny Ling run back to the pet shop. Sunil arrives at the pet shop, having just bent reality and celebrates the fact that he's there as well. The pets say that Sunil's a great magician and that they should have said so sooner. Blythe and Penny Ling walk into a door and echo that sentiment. Sunil says that he appreciates his own life some more. And Penny Ling says that he can practice his magic whenever, which Sunil takes them up on because he needs a volunteer for a sawing and half trick. But everyone runs off. And then to end the episode, Sunil says, Wow, I guess I made everyone disappear. Okay, so this episode, I don't, I don't know how to describe it. There's just so much weird circumstances going on. Like, honestly, like, I mean, you you heard what I had to say so far. I don't think I can say anything else on top of that. Although this is turning out to be the longest episode in the series so far. For this podcast, I mean. But what are you going to do when you have so much ridiculous stuff to deal with that you just need to break it down more? Anyway, I think that's going to be it for this episode of The Littlest Pet Cast. Remember to comment and review on iTunes, on a Shout Engine, on the Google Play Store, and wherever else RSS feeds go when they have the ability to bend reality. And please join me next time for the next episode Trading Places, which, I mean, it could have been the title of this episode too, but, I mean, they wanted to go with Lights, Camera, Mongoose, I guess, and I don't even think the next episode is, like, about trading places at all. It's just, whatever, we'll get to that when we get to that. Uh, later!